Welcome to the virtual edition of Technology Driven Classroom for Granberry ISD. Um, before we leave this slide, I want you to notice that our badge was created by one of our GHS students, Terry Parsons. Um, you'll be getting a chance to download this badge once you have completed this course. Um, but we want to um, give credit to some of the talented students we have in our, in our district. Um, one of the things that it's important that you know as you progress through this training is that this is um, a result of some plans that began several years ago. You may remember that the strategic plan uh, G2020 identified some things that the stakeholders in Granberry ISD as well as community members, students, um, identified as necessary and one of those things was um, 21st century competencies such as collaboration, communication, creativity, and critical thinking. And those um, targets and goals have become part of almost everything we do in Granberry ISD. The other thing that you may recall several years ago, um, in August of 2013, we became a Google Apps for Education district. And one of the first things that happened during that first year that we were um, a Google Apps for Education school was that Google lifted the limit on our storage. Uh, when we began, each user in the district, each teacher and each student had 30 gigs of storage, which seemed like quite a bit. Um, but during that first year, Google l lifted that limit and gave every teacher and every student in the district domain unlimited storage, which for us was huge because storage is a very expensive topic to talk about in GISD. Um, so we began to really look at and consider all the ways that Google Apps for Education and Google Drive could benefit our district. Um, the following year, Google Classroom became a reality and um, people really began to look at managing learning digitally, um, creating lessons, assigning work in a way that students could have access to it 24-7 no matter if they were at school or at home, no matter if they were on um, their personal device or a computer at the county library. Um, so things began to really change for our district. Um, three years ago and they continue to change because of the tools we have available to us both because of our bond election and the funds that our community has graciously given us uh, to spend on technology and other things in our district um, as well as um, some of the uh, forward-thinking people who have provided our leadership. When you have such change as we've had with our G2020 strategic plan, with the onset of project-based learning um, and Google Drive and all of the Google Apps for Education initiatives, you need a way to determine whether you're really making a difference. The slide you're looking at right now is the district's um, Breitbart survey. And you're going to hear about the Breitbart survey uh, more and more. This is the, the what I call the 30,000 feet view of the district's results. Um, this is a survey that collects information from students, from teachers, um, from as many parents as we can get to answer the survey. Um, we, we ask questions about technology in GISD, how it's used in the classroom, and in what ways teachers and students are using technology in, as a learning tool. We ask questions on this survey about access to technology, devices, um, internet access. We ask questions about basic skills that we believe are necessary for students and, and teachers um, to function and carry on daily activities. And we also ask questions about the environment um, of GISD um, against which students and teachers are asked um, to use technology. So those are some of the things that are covered in the survey. I want to call your attention, however, to the classroom domain, because this is the place where the instructional technology team focuses our training and our work. Um, if you look across the top of this slide, you'll see the legend that describes uh, the levels that are indicated here. Um, as a district overall, we don't have any um, gray areas where we really are only in the beginning stages of the levels of technology use. We do have, however, some in the emerging level. Uh, this may look like a nice shade of pink, but it really is a red flag for us. Um, we have lots of um, proficient use of technology in our district. We have some advanced use and we even have some places where we came out exemplary um, in this survey. 
I want you to look down this classroom domain and the, the hot spot here is in the classroom domain where um, teachers use of the four C's as it relates to technology was addressed. The questions that were asked on this survey were um, such things as how often and in what ways do you have your students collaborate and communicate with each other using digital devices and tools? Um, another question might be how often and in what ways do you ask your students to use digital resources to connect and collaborate with um, students in other classrooms across the district? There were also questions on the survey about um, how often and in what ways teachers and students collaborate and communicate outside of the district across the community. So these are some um, examples of questions that were on the survey that um, certainly relate to what you're about to learn in technology-driven classrooms. So um, we hope every year when we give this survey that we show growth and show progress and um, the training that you are attending and learning about today is part of um, how we would like to help you grow. We're going to talk throughout this course about the tools that you have available to use. One of those tools um, is a Chromebook. Depending on what grade level you teach, you may have 10 Chromebooks available to you individually, you and your students. Um, you have shared carts of Chromebooks. The ratio in the district is um, growing, and we believe that we have mobile devices available um, whenever teachers and students need them. You also, as a teacher in the district, have a document camera that we're going to talk about and hopefully you'll learn some new and innovative ways to use your document camera. No matter where you teach, there are iPads available. You may not have them in your classroom as your mobile device of choice, but there are iPads available to check out um, in some campuses through the library uh, and on some campuses through the different departments. But iPads are available in the district and we want to talk about um, some basic skills and ways to use iPads in your classrooms. Of course, um, the Google Apps for Education, Google Drive, a shared Google Docs, drawings and slides and such are um, one of our most important collaborative tools, and we will talk about that today. If you teach in a pre-K through eighth grade classroom, you also have a smart board in your, um, in your room to use. Um, in, an, in an online virtual course, it's really hard to um, do much hands-on um, with a smart board. We are going to talk about some new updates and give you an idea of some things that have been um, added with the latest version of software and give you a chance to look at your smart board as a, as a tool to help your students in your classroom as well. One of the things I would encourage you to do before you embark upon this course, um, pay close attention to both the written directions that you're going to get in Google Classroom and the video tutorials that are provided for you. If you have questions, the first option is always to go back and reread the explanations, directions, watch the video tutorials a second time, make sure you're catching everything to clarify the questions you may have. I would encourage you to be curious, seek answers. Um, if things are unfamiliar, learn all you can, Google it, um, search for YouTube videos. Don't rely on just the videos and tutorials and explanations that you find in Google Classroom because there are resources available because we uh, work in a collaborative um, field. There are lots of ideas and resources available if you will search for them even if it's on your own. And above all, be open to new ideas. Um, it, the greatest pitfall that we see is teachers wanting to do the same things they've always been doing um, and try to force those things to happen on digital uh, resources. We want you to try to do something innovative and new um, and help your students learn in a new way.